Uh, yeah, hello. Oh, look, Jack's taking a shit. Good boy, Jack. Uh, hello and welcome to another episode of Crime Page by Badney Dozen. Uh, good evening, just before sunset, from the east side of the Ruby Mountains in Elko County, Nevada. Today, we're going to check out a plant that uh, is only known from a land area about the size of a football field. It's the only place in the world that it grows, all right? This plant is entirely endemic uh, to a surface area that's gonna be able to fit all within the frame of this camera, okay? It only grows on the sinter deposits, that is the uh, precipitated silica as a result of a boiling hot spring here. It only grows on the, sila the sinter deposits of this one uh, little boiling spring. All right, it's a species of buckwheat and a genus Areogonum. It's Areogonum argophyllum. Let's go check it out. You know, those cows, they were a little bit bummed out by our presence earlier, but uh, they seem to have relaxed a little bit. I don't want to bum them out too much. When I, I spoke to the, I had to get permission from the rancher to come in here, the guy that ranches him. Real nice guy. And, uh, you know, when I told him what I wanted to do, he said, just be careful because some of those cows, you know, get a little hot and bothered. They get a little pissy. And uh, so I says, okay, well, I have the dogs with me. And he said, yeah, they just don't like people. You know, and I said, okay, that's that's nice. I can respect that. But, uh, you know, it looks like the dogs are probably going to keep them at bay. They were, they, were, uh, they were aggressively mooing when we showed up, but they seemed to have chilled out a little bit. Anyway, as you can see, we got a little uh, mounded area up here. You could see the, uh, get a little bit of uh, elevation, maybe like five or six feet. That's where we're going to, okay? The reason for that elevation gain right there, that five foot tall little hill, is all the precipitated silica. This hot spring, this boiling hot spring, has been here for a very long time. Now this is not the type of hot spring where you might see uh, a geriatric scrotum or, you know, three hippies uh, playing flute. These are all unfortunate events that have happened to me in hot springs in the past. You could see, I mean, look right here. This is all a result of precipitation of uh, minerals coming out of the hot water. Look at that. All this, you could tell this thing has been here for a very long time. Very long time. <clears throat> so you're not going to see that kind of stuff at this hot spring. Look, they're already getting, what? I got every right to be here. Huh? I talked to the guy. You're not gonna see any of that stuff at this hot spring, all right? This this hot water is roughly 178 degrees, I believe. A friend of mine who's a botanist in the state of Nevada told me that they, they wanted to actually, uh, they were trying to, they were gonna take, I forget what she said, if they were trying to stick a thermometer in there, or if they were trying to take, uh, they were trying to take some sort of measurement and they were worried that it was so hot it would damage their equipment. So that gives you an idea of the temperatures we're dealing with. Now, this sinter deposit, it's basically just silica that's dissolved at depth via the hot water and then transported to the surface. Look at all the all of the minerals right there. And then it, when once that hot water gets to the surface and cools, it precipitates out all that uh, all that silica. So it just depends on what the basement rock is that uh, the hot water is moving through. And again, we get we get lots of hot springs in Nevada because the crust is thinning due to uh, extensional tectonics. Go to Google Maps, click terrain layer, and look at the basin and range. Look at the Great Basin. It just looks like a bowl with Reno on the west side and Salt Lake City on the east. It's all stretching crust, thinning crust, and beneath it, uh, you know, you got a lot of magma. Beneath that, you got a lot of magma, and it's uh, heating up all the groundwater, and then that groundwater gets hot and comes to the surface with, with, with whatever minerals it's dissolved at depth. And once that groundwater cools at the surface, all that stuff comes out of it. Anyway, I've been talking enough. Let's keep walking. Yeah, this is what most of northern Nevada looks like, at least when you're not in the mountains. Just looks like snow. It's just Nevada snow, good old Nevada snow. I have fond memories of piloting a freight train going about 70 miles per hour between Elko and Sparks, Nevada. And just, uh, it was back in the days before they had the inward facing cameras, which kind of killed the whole party, you know? 
and we were just blazing along beautiful sunny afternoon beautiful summer sunny afternoon in northern Nevada and uh, the engineer I was working with I was a student engineer at the time was a metalhead and we were just blaring Iron Maiden so we were just just blazing through this habitat on a freight train going 70 listening to Maiden it was it was quite nice God it's still fucking hot out there. Jesus Christ Okay, here's a nice plant. Anything that grows here is gonna be pretty remarkable, if anything, for its ability to tolerate this soil and this heat. This is Ivesia kingii. This is a member of the rose family. Get up close, check out those flowers. You can see those uh, five petals, five clawed petals alternating with the sepals. They occur in between the sepals. And it looks like you got uh, quite a few stamens in there. I was gonna say 10, but it looks like more than it. Flip it over, look at the calyx. Ivesias are weird, man. Look at the leaves on this. Almost looks like some sort of damn lycophyte, like a selaginella or something. Somewhere a cow is in emotional pain. Wonder what that's about. You can see it's one of the only things growing here besides a few of the grasses. That alone, I'm, my interest is already a little aroused, ooh. So as you can see, where the water's coming out the ground is up there a little bit. And what we're walking through is just that, it was at one time a course that the water took. You can see the cows have been here. Oh yeah, here we go, here's another banger. I can't believe this fucking thing was thrown. I was here two weeks ago, and these were still, they were going off, they're still going off. It's been 105 degrees every day. It's still 90 degrees and the sun's been behind the clouds for the last hour. Ipomopsis tenuituba. Tenuituba. You say it in the most obnoxious Midwest accent. Daunt. Tenuituba. Look at the lacy ass foliage. Dissected, divided leaves. And there's that flower. Just a little pink trumpet. A little pink firecracker. You prick. Five fused petals. The sepals you got down there. There's the calyx. You got the five anthers inside that tube and a little bit of speckling a little bit of fuchsia speckling on those light pink petals you can see the flowers already done those little antennas hanging off that's the style which of course is attached to the ovary down at the bottom these things can get bigger when i was here last they were all there were a lot more going off they were like two feet tall just fields of them you got little facilia right there looks like a stata Paraginaceae, that's a banger of a plant too. Still pretty with those leaf veins even when it's not in flower. Okay, now we're getting closer to the source. Now we're getting closer to the good stuff. And you can see the water is still running a little bit despite the heat, despite the, the, the intense heat, all right? Not running like it was two weeks ago, but it's still going. And the water, the source is behind that fence. It's got, it's again, it's 178 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll burn your ass. So this is the original type locality of this buckwheat, of this hot springs buckwheat, known only from this location. Only place in the goddamn world that grows is right here. Right here on this sinter deposit. And here it is right here. Pardon the cow shit. Areogonum argophyllum. Look at it. This is tiny little seispitose mate sending up a little, a little lollipop of an inflorescence. How the fuck do the buckwheats do it? How do they do it? You go to barren environments anywhere west of the 100th meridian, you're gonna find the buckwheat, all right? I got 10 bucks on it. You may not notice them at first when you're passing them 80 miles per hour on the freeway, but you stop, you pull that car over, pretend you gotta take a leak, and then when, when none of your friends are watching, you go run off into the hills and say, you know, wait for me, fuckers. Try to get the keys when you do that too so they can't leave you. I've done that before, it works. All right, especially if you're with people who don't want to look at the plants. They'll be fine. They could deal with it. Look at that thing. Just a little puffball of, a, of an inflorescence. Got like 50 flowers all in that head right there. So there's that flowering head. Yes, I had to rip one off, but it's for the interest of science and documentation, all right? Don't worry about it. They said it was fine. Just like, you know, if you're looking at sunflowers, you got to look at the phyleries. If you're looking at buckwheats, you got to look at that involucre. The little vase that holds the flower. In this case, it seems to be a series of vases. Where'd that thing go? 
Break out your hand lens. All right, I promise it'll be rewarding. Get down at the ground. Get down. Stare at the ground. Break out the hand lens. Check out what the shit you're looking at. Look, you got a, you got multiple involucres there. With uh, how would you measure all those tiny flowers coming out of them? You know, you really got to get up close and look at this. Look at the leaves. Tiny little blue bastards. Covered in wool, forming a, a little sespatose mat, a little pincushion mat. How deep does that woody root go? Huh? How deep does it go? And how many individuals are here? We were here two weeks ago. It was not only from this spot. And then we walked down that way a little bit. And we found a whole bunch more. But I just walked through there and I, quite a few were gone. I think the cows might have nibbled on them. So anyway, but this thing is blooming and how is it doing that? Oh, it's covered in cow shit too. The, that cow diarrhea. Why do the cows always got the diarrhea? Is that from, are they just eating Taco Bell? Taco Bell's one of the nastiest things. I would, I would like to say that. Taco Bell's one of the most decrepit. Eating Taco Bell is like eating Subway. All right, there's a lot of shame involved in it. You don't do it unless you have to. And even then, when you do, you don't tell anybody about it. All right? It's like eating a sub that sandwich that had the pedophile as the uh, mascot. You know what I'm talking about, the Subway. God, I smell Subway bread and I, I retch. I had a friend who was a sandwich artist in high school. He told me some lewd stories about what the employees did when no one was looking. See, look, there's, there's, there it is. This one's already done. The ones closer to the water source are going off. Look at that. And inside there, you got the Akeens. You got a bunch of little tiny seeds. Tiny seeds that don't really get transported by anything except water. And maybe, maybe to a lesser extent, the wind. You know, and maybe, maybe the fact Givnish, my friend Tom Givnish, Professor Bonnest at uh, Madison, surmises that genera like Ariaganum that don't have much dispersal capabilities for their seeds can oftentimes tend to be very, very diverse. You know, have a lot of species in them and they speciate readily because there's not much gene flow between different populations, between different disparate populations. Okay, because that seed doesn't get that far. Where you, or as you take a, a, a genus, say a genus in the sunflower family like Connectus the glossiate, it's got the scale like peppers on top of its seeds to help the seeds blow around with the shit. That thing's everywhere. There's little variations, a couple little variations in populations of Connectus the glossiate, depending on where you are, but not much. It's all the same species because they're still interbreeding. There's still pollen transfer going on across the whole range of the species. Not so with a lot of buckwheats. I always wanted Jack to be a frisbee dog, but he just, he's got no interest in it. If it's a tennis ball, fine, but if it's a dried cow patty, not at all. You know, I got sent to this reform school for fucked up kids when I was uh, younger and we used to have cow patty fights. We'd throw dried cow shit at each other. I got, I got beaten in the head many a time with a piece of dried cow fecal material. Oh, look, it's an astragalus. Look at that. How does it do that? There's the fruits. Flowers are done, but what a banger this must have been. Astragalus flowers, of course they got the pea flowers. Astragalus is another genus with so many goddamn species. 4,000 species, super diverse in Western North America. They do well in the, in, the, in the high and dry, the low and dry, the medium altitude and dry. And they got some got incredible flowers. Look at a Astragalus asclepiodoides. It's an Astragalus that looks like a goddamn milkweed. That's what it means, a sleepy of doides. Asclepius is the genus of milkweeds. Doides means looks like. Oh, uh, look, look, it's a Senecio. Still going off. A little Pecora. Very distinct phyleries. Glaber's phyleries, one series. See, you gotta look at the phyleries. See those ridges around the uh, side of the flower head right there? Very, very intense leaves on it, look at that. Blue, blue and covered in scales. Got a whole lot of cheat grass, scourge of the west, real bad invasive. And you also got an evening primrose, an onothera. Look, it looks like this guy's just getting ready to open. This guy opened last night. This guy will be open in about 45 minutes once the sun's down and my sorry ass is walking back to the truck with two neurotic dogs in tow, trying to dodge a bunch of angry cows. Look, you can see, look at that though. Look, it looks, Look, you got this. You got the stigma poking out. Is that what that is? I need a hand lens, goddammit. 
Is it the stigma? Or no, it looks like there's four anthers. But they're already poking out. They're getting ready. They're, they're, they're holding their breath. They can't wait. Look at those leaves. Look at those lobes on it. Those little teeth on the margin. There's quite a few of them. That's another cool genus too, the evening primroses, Onothera. The onion's done, got the seeds right in there. Might spread this around. These were going off when I was here last. They were pink flowers, pink onions. Little bulb in the ground. They'll be back next year, don't worry about it. So why does this thing only grow here, okay? It's been surmised that its closest relative is Ariagonum kingii, which grows up there, up in the mountains. And uh, at some point, by mutation and a, a successful <laughs> a successful mutation and a very thorough uh, thoroughly uh, spread allele frequency that's the wrong way to say that but you know what I mean this thing speciated and uh, the lineage what well, was it one species presumably diverged maybe through hybridization maybe there was a whole genome duplication event the polyploid event what? Why, why, do you, why do you do that? You're looking at me like that. I, why? You know what that makes me feel? They always they always look so... You want to go already? They're mad because I won't let them chase the cows. It's because I know the fucking rancher. <clears throat> anyway, there was, there was a divergent event. This thing speciated. It apparently had more success on the center deposits... Is, you know, which are a result of the hot springs, and there's a lot of hot springs in Nevada, had more success here than its uh, sister species did that it was once shared a common ancestor with. And so now, it's one of the only things that can grow on these barren deposits if the cows aren't here to fuck it up. But either way, you know, again, once again, geology and the soils, AKA the adaptive situation, causes the speciation of a new lineage of plants. So once again, geology is tied to plant life, you know? Art Kruckberg wrote a goddamn book about this 40 years ago. I mean, what I'm saying is not, this is not news to anybody who's into this stuff, but uh, don't you like it when they trample and shit all over everything? All right, let's keep going. Yeah, that, these Ipomopsis are done. This whole thing was lit up last time I was here. But there's a ton of seed there, and I'm probably gonna try to collect some once I'm done making this video. Because this is a this is a wonderful plant, this phlox. Oh yeah, look at this. This is still running. This is juicy and good. Bet that water tastes absolutely terrible. And not just because of the cow shit, because of the high mineral content. Remember, that's hot water. So this water is now dumping everything that's in it. Hot water holds more dissolved, uh, dissolved solids more dissolved particles than cold water. So once that hot water reaches the surface and cools off to whatever the ambient temperature is, oh, Jesus Christ. They just really shut up the stream. Once that hot water cools off to whatever the ambient temperature is, it drops whatever it's holding, okay? Just like you, when you're trying to shoplift some stuff from Walmart, okay, you got it all, all, all put in a cooler, all right, and you're just carrying the cooler out, Security, some big meathead says, hey, stop. You say, oh, shit, you drop the thing, and then you just run for it. And hopefully you get away. Okay, those loss prevention guys. Not that I've ever done that. I'm just saying those loss prevention guys get really into their job. You know, which is fine. Respect to them. They can, you know, that's good they take pride in what they do. It's all just part of the game. All right, here we go. Yeah, see, it was running a little farther last time I was here. It tends to dry out right about there, but... uh still real interesting geology here again it's the taco bell it's the taco bell you know someone you probably had a friend now i don't drink anymore but but when i did and i hung out with people that drink i knew people that did that and it was always after taco bell they get so hammered 2 a.m rolls around maybe 1 30 and taco bell's the only thing left open and just out of shame and hunger and and probably complete Lack of necessity as well. You don't need to do that to yourself. They go to Taco Bell, they make a midnight run, and next thing you know, you see that, just a brown trail, you know? A brown trail making its way to the bathroom. All right, the sun's about to set. This camera has a really shit image quality once we get in low light. But you could see we're about 
I don't know, 120 yards from uh, the original population. And you could see that uh, that buckwheat's made its way down here. Again, just water moving those tiny akins, those tiny, tiny seeds. And, you know, looking in this one capitate inflorescence, this one little lollipop. Look, this guy's still going off. Look at that. You get those nine stamens poking out. Buckwheat's got nine stamens per flower. So he's one of those tiny flowers in there. It's got nine stamens poking out of it. Those, one of those tiny akins apparently uh, made its way down here and had a lot of success. Look at how wooly that shit is. Look at that. Looks like somebody tore up a plush now. I love it. You can hear the kill deer doing its call. You see it over there? I love those things. You'll find them, you know, you'll see them in like suburban Chicago nesting in soccer fields at night. You know, you go out to, you know, to, to walk or walk the dog or whatever the shit and you're in a soccer field, you hear these things, scares the shit out of you. They hang out near train tracks too, the kill deer. Another friend of mine, he's a railroader up in Michigan. He's always talking about, he had me draw a kill deer for him actually because he said they, he always liked seeing them around the train tracks. Look at these things. Look at these tiny fucking... Look at that. How old is that? When did that germinate? How long did it live for? How is it flowering? Now, I mean, it's quite pleasant now, but it was 105 degrees earlier today. I was, I was waiting in the truck for it to look like this, for that sun to go behind those mountains. Because you have to hike a mile in. I don't want to, you know, I'm not not uh, not gonna die i like i like making these videos and showing you guys this stuff but i don't want to die for it look at that there's there's one right there too look at it just just hiding amongst the center too low to get gnawed by the cows that's a that's an adaptive trait it's flowering right now it's actually just finishing up but again if you didn't know what it was you didn't have any context for it you'd just say meh just another plant just it's just some green shit on the ground who cares What's it got to do with me? Can I can I stick it in my mouth and, and eat it and not die? Will it get me high? Lowest common denominator shit. You know, I want the story. I want the meat of the story. I want the shit that's going to fulfill my philosophical need as a sentient bipedal ape. Look at this thing. Look at how fucking tiny that, that thing is. Don't you want the backstory? Don't you want the context? Don't you want to know more about the land you live on? Don't be, don't be an idiot. Don't be just another uh, semi-conscious bipedal ape strutting through life, not paying attention to what's around you, totally oblivious, just stuck in the depressing human world, the human myopia. You want the backstory, don't you? You know, they should be teaching evolution in first grade. They should be teaching geologic time scale in first grade. You know, but instead, we're learning that the Eli, Eli Whitney invented the fucking cotton gin. Who cares? Eli Whitney was probably a prick. I'd kick him in the balls. Not think twice. Actually, I wouldn't kick him in the balls. I'd probably just jack some stuff. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> would you would you take some stuff from Eli Whitney? I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Anyway, let's keep going. Look at this. They're everywhere. They're everywhere down here. Bone dry. There's that Ivesia too. What a banger. What a banger. A rose. Look, she just gave up. <laughs> Look at this thing. Look at that rose again, that Ivesia. <laughs> Speaking of Canactus the Glossii, this fucking thing is everywhere. And I don't mind. I don't mind that it's everywhere. I like seeing it. This thing is not even at full antithesis yet. Not a single little floret in that capitulum, in that flower head, has opened up. This is still at the prime of its life as an annual, as an annual plant species. Probably germinated a few weeks ago. It'll be dead in a few months. And in the meantime, it will have produced probably, I don't know, 50 seeds. 50 seeds in that little head right there. Look at this one. This one looks dead. But nope, it's just hiding. Still very much alive. Just hiding out. Probably not losing any moisture at all. And once they get rain again, once they get a little bit of rain, say they get a little summer thunderstorm, probably unlikely. But if they do, certainly by the winter, 
once they get some precipitation, this thing's, it's set, it's set, it's set to go. It's fine. It'll be fine. Pull through, make it till next year. What's that? Look at, that's a, that's a goddamn seedling right there. Look at how tiny that thing is. Just blends right in with the center. Finally got him to settle down. I'm happy. He's, he's still just staring at me, but you know, you're something else. You know that? Do you know that? Yeah, so there's that little seedling, that little one. Then this over here is that Senecio I was showing you earlier. It's not a buckwheat. It looks like it, though. And then there's that Canactus. Just little guys. Just getting going. Well, look at that one over there. And that tiny, that tiny buckwheat. Oh, Canactus de Glacia is going off again. Boom. Look at that. Right there, you got the Astragalus. Everything's kind of cute right now. Oh, you got a carrot, too. Cymopterus or Lomatium? Which one? Who gives a shit? They look so much alike. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so the cows have been, you know, dicking around, doing their little dances, whatever. This guy got kicked up, all right? But he's doing fine. That root probably tethers his ass deep into the ground. Probably eight inches to 10 inches into that ground. And if I dig down just a little bit, I can feel it's kind of wet down there. Despite the heat, despite the 105 degree heat we were at today. So I'm just gonna bury that guy back, put him back like that. Look at this guy. So they'll do fine. It's amazing. A lot of, a lot of cacti do that same thing. Obviously not as a result of cows, but they'll just recess into the ground to hide from that harsh Chihuahua desert heat. Peyote does that. Astrophytum does that. Pretty remarkable. And they do it so well that sometimes you'll go back to a population you'd been to before that was healthy and it, you know, you won't see any of them. They'll just be so deep in the ground, but they're still there. Then you come back after the area's gotten some rain and they're lush and they're flowering, whatever. It's not always poachers. Look at that beautiful sunset. One of many that keep me out of the news and make me refrain from committing homicide. And maybe you too. Yeah, the cattle are doing a number on this area. I mean, shit's just torn up, trampled, whatever. But the good news is the landowner is cool and uh, realizes how important this spot is and uh, is going to be applying for a conservation easement. So that warms my little... Uh, my little black heart. It does. Makes me feel good inside. Cool guy, actually, too. I talked to him. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Run for the border. No, run for the bathroom. Nothing like going there out of pure shame at 1 in the morning because you're hungry and you forgot to eat. You order a bean burrito and basically what you get is just a, a tortilla, a flour tortilla with a little squirt of bean sauce in there and maybe a bean or two. Plus a few uh, scraps of shredded cheese. And then it costs like three bucks. You know, some of these areas, the fucking ground feels hollow. <laughs> That's kind of unnerving, huh? Fall in, get boiled alive. All right, the light's getting bad. The image quality's gonna get worse. I gotta go, but at least I got, I got a chance to show you that thing. Ariagonum argophyllum, not only from one place in the entire world, and you're looking at it. It ranges from there to just uh, up top that hill. It grows on the silica-rich deposits of boiling, scalding hot springs. And can ingeniously avoid being eaten by cows by how low to the ground it stays. That's all I got for you this evening. Have a good rest of your night. Try not to be a prick. Go fuck yourself. Bye.